Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Moto Mangi. The Moto Mangi channel. <laughs> welcome to the Moto Mangi channel. There, we'll say it like that. Today I want to talk about a video by another moto vlogger. A response video of sorts. Uh, this moto vlogger is named Life of Birch. I'll put a link to his video up in the corner to the video in question. The moto vlog he made is called Another Failed Video. Now he put this out a few weeks ago. Well, a few weeks ago at the time I'm filming this. By the time I post this on my channel, it'll probably be a few months from a few months ago. Maybe one month or two months, we'll see. Anyway, in this video he talks about, well he started talking about how he was trying to film a video and it kept failing. How he kept messing up this video he was trying to make and he couldn't get it started and that kind of thing. And other motor, you know, if you're a motor vlogger, you've been there. We've all, we've all been there where we're trying to make a video and it's not working or something gets in the way or cameras don't work, that kind of thing. But after a few minutes of this video, he started talking about the hardships of motor vlogging and what makes motor vlogging so difficult for him. Now I watched this video and I found it fascinating because his point of view and my point of view are completely different when it comes to motor vlogging. And a lot of the hardships he has with regards to motor vlogging, I don't have at all. Not even a little bit. But some of them I, I can sympathize with. But probably to a lesser degree than he has. So let me go down the points he made in this video and talk about them from my point of view as a hobbyist motor vlogger. Because Life of Birch is what you call a career motor vlogger. He's doing YouTube for a living. At the time of this video, when I'm filming this, he has like 44,000 subscribers, somewhere around there, I think. So he's, you know, a very successful motor vlogger. His channel's pretty big. He's doing well. He rides a Honda Rebel 1100, one of the new ones. Very nice bike. Those new Honda Rebels are really sweet. But his point of view as a career motor vlogger is very different than mine as a hobbyist motor vlogger. And uh, I'll intersperse some clips of his video here, of him saying what, you know, his points, and then I'll talk about them from my point of view. So right at the bat, Birch talks about how time consuming motor vlogging is. And uh, I was talking about how I just don't have time to do anything. And he's like, how do you not have time? Like, what all goes into it? And it wasn't in like a condescending way, so hopefully that didn't just sound like it. But essentially saying like, kind of like the same viewpoint that lots of people have, where like you guys just see, where all you guys see is the, um, the 10 to 15 minute video that comes out of the adventure, but you don't see all the work that goes in behind the scenes. But yeah, essentially it's easy to see like, what is that like poster that's in every school book fair, like the tip of the iceberg success and then underneath it is like all the stuff that people don't see i've heard lots of other career motor vloggers say the same thing how doing youtube for a living takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort but in this point in time specifically and i guess if you're doing two or three videos per week trying to maximize your views and trying to make really high quality videos that probably is the case because they're doing, you know, he's doing some fancy editing and lots of editing and lots of planning on his videos and that kind of stuff. So for him, it probably does take a lot more time. For me, as a hobbyist motor vlogger, I might spend one day a week working on my, on Moto Mangi. And when I say I spend a day working on Moto Mangi, that's not like a full day. That's like, you know, a couple hours I'll do some editing or whatever, and then I'll go get something to eat do a little more editing or whatever, then I'll go outside for a bit, or maybe I'll go for a ride, maybe I'll exercise or do house cleaning or whatever, you know I mean? I'm not even talking a full day, but maybe a half day total per week working on Moto Mangi. But Birch talks about how he does a, it takes him like 10 to 20 hours per video of work, more or less. But anyway, I filmed the video and then I went to edit it. And what lots of people don't realize is like for a 10 to 15 minute video, depending on the context of the video, what type of video it is, how much B-roll, like secondary footage I put in there, how much audio engineering has to go on. Videos can take anywhere from 10 to 20 hours just for the actual editing part of it. And that's really something else. I mean, wow, <laughs> that's not my experience at all. I, you know, other than filming the motor vlog for me, which takes, you know, half hour to an hour per motor vlog usually to get a 10, 20 minute video out of it. 
maybe less depending on what I'm filming, what I'm doing, but after it's filmed, I only spend a couple hours editing, probably. Maybe some of the longer, more fancy videos I've done taking more than a couple hours, like maybe like 10 hours editing, but that's not typical for me. Typical is only a couple hours editing. And then he talks about how much time he spends working on, you know, the title and the thumbnail and stuff. And then that's when I had to make the thumbnail and I had to do the title and everything like that. People don't realize just picking the thumbnail takes more brain power than I'd like to admit. And then editing it takes hours because I do the fancy stuff where you have to like remove the background and outline it. And so yeah, we'll say between picking the thumbnail, editing it and doing the title, honestly, that's like another three to five hours right there. So Burst says he takes three to five hours just on the titles and thumbnails for his videos. And wow, <laughs> that's not my experience at all. Now again, Birch is a career mode vlogger, so he's putting a lot more work and effort into his videos and titles and thumbnails than I am. So for me, typically I'll put maybe half hour to an hour tops working on the title and the thumbnail. The title I usually do within a few minutes. I mean, I. I know what I want the video to be, what I want to say, and what the title to be, and I'll just write it down. I don't really do much in terms of search, uh, what they call SEO. I forget what it stands for, it's an acronym. I'll put it down here when I go home and figure it out and when I edit this video, I'll SEO. But basically you're trying to optimize your title and keywords and that kind of stuff. I don't do a lot of that, or hardly any of it really because I just pretty much titled the video what I wanted to be titled and then the thumbnail I'll do in half an hour or so. I'll take a picture I took out and about on the bike or a still from the GoPro footage itself or something and I'll just make a quick thumbnail, quick and dirty and then I'll call it a day. <laughs> I didn't really think too much about what kind of thumbnails will get the best amount of views or the most clicks on it or that kind of stuff. I don't really think about that kind of stuff. But career mode vloggers do, they put a lot of work into that to try and get their videos as much view as possible, as many views as possible, so they can make as much money as possible because if you're a career mode vlogger, you're making your living from YouTube, you're doing it for money to pay your bills and stuff, so I get that. But three to five hours per thumbnail and title for Birch, wow, that's that surprises me. So when Birch says, he spends a lot of time working with brands and talking to brands and making deals with gaming companies to do advertisements and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't do any of that. <laughs> so right off the bat, that's a difficulty and a problem I don't experience at all. You say you don't have time, how much stuff you have going on. And I'm like, dude, there's just so much stuff behind the scenes of like working with brands and videos not working out that people don't see. Now part of that is because I'm a small channel compared to Life of Birch. I mean, he's with 44,000 subscribers, he's getting lots of offers from companies for advertisers and sponsorships and that kind of thing. Apparently he does voice work for gaming companies too, apparently, because of his voice and stuff so for advertisements. So. He's really turned YouTube into a profit center for him, doing more than just motovlogs. You know, the sponsors and the ads make him lots of money. And lots of big YouTubers and motovloggers have that. They all deal with that. For a lot of uh, career motovloggers, the sponsorships and the ads make them more money than the clicks and the views do. But for me, as a hobbyist motovlogger, I'm not bothered with any of that. Now, part of that is because my channel is so small. I mean, there are no businesses knocking down my door for me to do sponsorships and stuff. But even as, even if I had tens of thousands of subscribers, I don't think I'd still even be doing sponsorships because it's not, I do motor vlogging for fun. It's a hobby to me. I never started Moto Mangi as a career or a advertising source I'm not really interested in that I'm not really interested in doing ads or sponsorships for other companies either I'm, I'm doing this for me I mean I'm making videos I want to make and 
I'm having fun doing it and I want to keep having fun doing it. So even if I was offered sponsorships and advertising revenue offers, that kind of thing, I'd probably turn them down, honestly. I don't think I'd bother doing them because it would take away from what I want to do with Moto Mangi and all my channel. Although I've never had, you know, I mean, I, that, okay, I'm not going to say never because I have had a few sponsorships offered to me and I've had some companies come approach me for doing sponsorships and ads and I've turned them down because they weren't products I was interested in talking about or that I wanted to support. But for me, turning down the sponsorship offers was also partly because I just didn't want to bother. And you could say that's lazy, I guess. <laughs> you could say I'm leaving money on the table with Moto Mangi. And that's probably true. But I'd rather do what I ha find fun and what I want to do than what I have to do. And I don't want to turn Moto Mangi into a job. I don't want to turn Moto Vlogging into a job. I want to have fun Moto Vlogging. So that's a difference between a career motor vlogger and a hobbyist motor vlogger as a career motor vlogger you want to take every sponsorship and ad offer you can that's an approach to you because you want the money you know you're trying to make a living whereas as a hobbyist motor vlogger i have the freedom to turn them away because i don't need the money from youtube i'm not doing this as a career i won't be able to pay my electric bill or anything else next month because I turned down the sponsorship or whatever you know I mean for me it's not a thing or a concern but for people like Life of Birch for career motor vloggers it certainly is and beyond that like if you can you know you can make the best video in the world but if nobody clicks on it and watches it it doesn't matter so yeah I don't agree with Birch's point of view on this at all but again our point of views are different when he says there's no point making a video if no one clicks on it he's saying that because for him clicks equal money and money is his you know he's trying to live off youtube so i understand where he's coming from but that's something that he worries about when he's planning a motor vlog or shooting a motor vlog that never even enters my mind <laughs> like i make the videos i want to make I make the motor vlogs I want to make because I find them interesting because I, you know, because it's a video I want to make, because it's something I'm interested in, because it's a, you know, like, for example, I have a list of road spotlights in a, a Excel spreadsheet that I want to make down the road. A list of roads that I want to ride to and do, a, do road spotlights on. Now, I didn't make that list of roads dependent on which roads we get the most views on, on Moto Mangi. It doesn't even enter my mind when I'm playing my videos. I am gonna go shoot the road spotlights for the roads I wanna ride on and see myself. All I'm worried about is going and riding the roads, you know, and seeing them and experiencing them and filming it and making a video about it. Whether or not it gets views is inconsequential to me. <laughs> now, sure, I'd like my videos to get views. I'm not, you know, some of my videos that got low views or it's disheartening for sure but that's a emotional thing it's not really a financial thing for me but for a career motor vlogger like birch sure you know when you plan out a motor vlog when you film a motor vlog he's trying to optimize views and clicks to make as much money as possible so his point of view is completely different than mine i was really well, i'm not gonna say i was surprised but i was startled at the at his point of view on that or his his outlook on that because I never really gave it a thought about you know the videos I want to make and whether or not they'll be successful or not if I'm making a video that I want to make that I enjoy making if it gets no views then I still have fun making it you know I still if I did a road spotlight on this road here whatever road I'm on I don't even know what it's called but good view from here though wow back behind Lake Ono somewhere Anyway, if I did a video on this a road spotlight on this road and it got no views, I still got to ride the road. I still got to experience the road. Oh my God. What a view. I've been back here a long time. I should do a road spotlight back here on some of these roads. <laughs> that's my, that's my, you know, that's my outlook that I'm doing it for myself for the fun of it. Nice car. Wow. Oh my 
God, wow. Should call this Vista Road. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I'll look up on Google Maps like and put the name of the road. Oh, here's this road sign. I'll see what it's called. But yeah, that's something Birch worries about that never even crosses my mind whether a video will be successful or not. Adams Hotel Road. I like Adams Hotel Road. I recommend that. Adams Hotel Road. But the point that I was making was an inspirational quote about Mr. Beast, about how he's like, you know, I'm not here to just put out videos, I'm here to put out the best videos. Everybody talks about, oh, I'm spending all this money on my videos, but I don't care, I'm not here to make money, I'm here to put out the best videos. So essentially what I'm saying is that is kind of what inspires me sometimes when I see a video that I finish and I'm like, is it good enough? And I'm like, if I have to ask that, then it's probably not, and why am I gonna waste my subscribers' time with something that like I know is not up to par? So yeah, his quote from Mr. Beast. Uh, Mr. Beast is a huge YouTube channel. He makes millions of dollars per year on YouTube. He's a big vlogger or whatever. But anyway, Birch's quote from Mr. Beast saying, I don't just want to put out videos on YouTube. I want to put out the best videos on YouTube. And Birch states that that's one of his goals too, that he tries to make the best video he possibly can. But that, that's something he, he worries about. That's something he puts a lot of time into that he... Yeah, if he makes a video and he doesn't like it, he'll actually go back and spend more time on it, editing it up and improving it or whatever. And that's again, part of trying to make money on YouTube. Part of the career mode of vlogger, but I agree with this to a point, whereas I do try and make the best video I can, but only to a point, only to an extent. Whereas, you know, if I put five hours editing a video and I get to a point where I'm, I'm content with it, then it's okay. I'll call it a wrap and I'll go do something else. I mean, I'll put it up on YouTube and I'll mark that one off my list of videos to make and I'll go on the next one because I'm not trying to make perfect videos or the absolute best videos. I'm just trying to have fun making videos for my channel. I mean, I'm trying to enjoy myself. Nice. With that said, I am trying to make decent videos for Moto Mangy too. I mean, I'm not trying to make crap and put crap out there on my channel. <laughs> So I do agree with Birch to a point on this, but I don't, it's not as important to me as it is to him, I guess. Like that quote from Mr. Beast, I'm sure Mr. Beast makes, you know, he, he's a perfectionist to some degree. He puts lots of time and effort into his videos, but he also spends a lot of money to make each of his videos too. And he has an editing crew and a filming crew. And when you're doing YouTube as a business and you have mouths to feed and salaries to support for other people and stuff, yeah, your outlook probably changes. For Moto Mangi, a crew of one and doing every job on the channel and doing everything and not trying to really make money on YouTube per se, it's less of a concern. <laughs> but I'm not gonna say it's not a concern at all because there, I have oftentimes when I'm editing a video up, if I don't, if there's something else I wanna do it or something, some way I wanna jazz it up or whatever, or just a fancy editing on it, whatever, I'll go back and I'll spend an hour or two making it putting in work into my video that no one will probably appreciate but doing it more for myself just for the fun of it and I do that sometimes where I'll go back and I'll do some editing to a video some extra editing just to simply try something new or to you know experience it or to learn how to do it I've done that a few times less worried about will it or will it not get more views this way just more for my own personal education or satisfaction or whatever. So again, I agree a little bit with Birch on this point, but our, our reasons for trying to make the best videos we can are different. And the extents to how much work we're willing to put in to do that is also very different. He puts in a lot more effort making the best video he possibly can, whereas I just put in a, a minimal kind of effort. <laughs> All right, so in this clip, Birch talks about how the difference he, he notices or, or the efforts he goes to to try and make more frenetic videos. Uh, he, calls, he calls them ADD videos. But meaning he tries to make them as, you know, cut out all the dead spaces, try to make them as snappy as possible, as frenetic as possible, 
Lots of you guys have said that you love the ADD aspect to the stuff that I do and me getting off topic and stuff. So hopefully I'm not going too overboard by including it in there because previously I used to think that videos had to be nice and polished and I would take all of that stuff out or like leave minimal of it in there. But lately I've been trying to do a better job at like leaving who I actually am included in the videos as much as I can. Look at this cow. What's up, boy? And I understand why he does this. This is well, it's his editing style, but he does it mainly because on YouTube there's a very strong correlation between videos that keep the viewer's attention versus videos that don't. If the video doesn't keep the viewer's attention, they'll click off it, they'll go watch something else. But it's been proven that the more frenetic videos, the more action-oriented or whatever videos do keep viewers' attentions better than the ones that don't. So that's why Birch tries to make his videos as crazy as possible, as ADD as possible, like, like he says. Because he's trying to really keep the viewer's attention as long as possible so that the video can show as many ads as possible so that he can get as much money as possible. It's a, it's a known YouTube strategy, very well documented. Lots of the most successful YouTubers do it that way. They edit videos that way. I prefer not to make my videos as frenetic as possible, as crazy as what Birch does, because I don't really care for that style of video. <laughs> so it's a personal preference to me. Uh, because I don't care for that kind of that style of video, I don't watch a lot of videos like that. I don't make videos like that. It's all editing styles. I mean, I could edit my videos that way and probably hold viewers' attention better if I really wanted to. But I'm making the videos that I want to make and the style I want to make them in the style I like to watch. So like in the style I like to watch myself. And yeah, that might get me less views than it could otherwise, maybe. But I'm fine with that because again, I'm a hobbyist motor vlogger. I'm not trying to make lots of money doing this. But I can see why Birch edits his videos the way he does. I mean, he talks about it further in his video about how, you know, it's a choice to do it that way and uh, yada yada yada. So I understand what he's saying, but again, from a hobbyist motor vlogger point of view, I have the freedom to not edit my videos that way. It's a choice. Which leads me to the next point where he talks about how he chooses his videos he wants to make and how you know, he often is forced to make videos in a certain way simply because they'll get more views and more clicks that way versus what he'd do otherwise. You know what, actually, let's backtrack a second. Let's let's take a step back and talk about even planning for the video. You gotta make sure you have enough content to put out at least one video a week, maybe two. So at least a few hours a week are spent just planning what videos am I gonna do? What videos are worth my time? Which ones should I prioritize over others? Like, what is just the strategy of the videos in the channel right now? I don't know, I feel like ever since I became a full-time YouTuber, I've been kind of forced because it's my full income. When I go to make a video, I spend less time focusing on what is this going to do for the community that I'm building and I spend more time focusing on what can I do to ensure that I get the most views possible to build the channel and make sure that this income is sustainable. All right, so Birch going full-time YouTube has forced him to make decisions about his channel that he wouldn't have made otherwise. Now I understand that because when you're a career mode vlogger, you're trying to make money off YouTube you're trying to optimize your videos and views for clicks and that kind of thing. So yeah, when you're doing that, you're not choosing your videos for what you want to do. You're choosing what you have to do, what's best for your channel, what's best for your income. Me, personally, my decision-making process for Moto Mangi is very simple. I think of videos I want to make, and I make them. <laughs> And I don't really care if they do well or not, or how many views or clicks they get. That's not really a concern for me. I just think of the videos I want to make that I think I would, I would enjoy making, that I would find fun making, and then I make them. And then I put them on YouTube, and I let the cards fall where they may, you know? But once again, that's a stark contrast between a career motive vlogger and a hobbyist motive vlogger. If you're doing it for a career, you have to make those choices, those decisions. 
you've got to try and make the most money you can and you've got to choose your video topics with that in mind whereas someone like me i don't have to that's my contrasting point of view for life of birch about motovlogging hardships again i found his his video very interesting and very uh thoughtful and enlightening too and i suggest anyone who's interested in this topic watch his video and see his point of view because it's interesting to hear his reasons and what he goes through making a video and how he makes a video and stuff i found it interesting this is very different than the way i do it and my experience as a hobbyist motor vlogger but life of birch good video man well done i enjoyed it hope you don't mind me doing a response video to your video and giving my point of view on it but you and i definitely have very different motor vlogging outlooks and very different concerns and stuff when it comes to motor vlogging and that's okay nothing wrong with that for a career motor vlogger you've got to choose certain things certain ways for a hobbyist motor vlogger you've got a lot more freedom and a lot more of a carefree attitude towards it you can do what you want and personally i like that kind of freedom i'd like to keep that freedom in moto mangi and in my channel i don't really want to give it up because for me doing motor vlogging is a fun hobby i don't want to turn it into a job i don't want to take the fun out of it so but it is interesting to read about the differences, the different point of views from other motor vloggers and what they go through versus what I go through. So let me know down below if you find it interesting, <laughs> what you think of the topic and uh, so on and so forth. With that note, I'm going to stop filming before my batteries get dead because my cameras are dying out and I don't want to lose, I don't want them to die on me. So before the batteries run out, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below or a question. Click like if you liked it. All that stuff. Yada, yada, yada. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, now I need gas. Nice BMW. All right. The batteries are almost out. Let's quick turn them off. <laughs> Victory is mine. That was close though, that was nearly dead.